My name's Anastasia, I'm a CSUMB service learner, and today I'm gonna show you how to thread. I've been threading for about five years now. Since high school, I actually started picking up thread and teaching myself how to do my own eyebrows and upper lip. Um, but I was getting professionally threaded in middle school, and I eventually kind of just wanted to teach myself how to do it and do it myself and save that extra money. So, as you can probably tell, it's very cost effective. You're not going to have to spend a lot of money to thread yourself. Um, a little thing of thread like this is going to last you probably around a year, maybe even more than that. I really haven't gone through a lot of threads like this over my years of doing threading on myself. And not just that, but it's pretty sustainable. It's not a lot of waste. You don't really have to also go and buy you know something every time you need to do it and you don't have to plan out a certain time to do it you kind of just sit down say okay i'm gonna thread now you know get it out and start doing it threading is usually only done on the face which includes really anywhere on the face um some people like to get their cheeks and their forehead threaded um, my friend likes to do that she really enjoys that she also can't wax because waxing gives her irritation, so she really enjoys threading for that reason as well. Um, I just started threading because I like doing my eyebrows and they can get very bushy, as some people's probably do as well. So I like to maintain it and not have to go out every three to four weeks to a professional and spend, you know, anywhere nowadays. Geez, probably like 20 to $25 just for threading. Like you always have these hairs over here going back. I do too. Like, I like to do that every two weeks around there. Um, I feel like that's the grow back time for me. Um, threading is also going to sting. So keep that in mind. It's hair removal. Um, it's not going to be probably easy at first if you're not used to that type of hair removal if you're not used to waxing if you've waxed before you'll probably enjoy threading um for the reasons that it's probably more precise and you can do it yourself it's going to be pretty easy you'll notice like it's not going to be something very hard to pick up so if you want to learn more about threading and i'll teach you some of my tricks i've learned over the years of me doing it myself then stay tuned and watch this video so the first thing you're going to do is grab your thread and you're going to kind of eyeball a length. Um, I like to just go about this much. And I like to cut it off with my teeth. It's very easy to cut that off. You could use scissors. And you're going to put those two ends together. And tie that end. It's just like this. And once you do that, you're going to notice that it makes a circle. So what this circle is basically what you're going to need. Um, you're going to put your hands inside and twist about five times. So you're just going to twist with one hand, just like this. One, two, three, four, five. Um, it doesn't have to be five times. It just has to be enough for you to get this. So you can kind of hear it. So, with this, you're going to notice that you might not know how to hold it. Um, I'm just going to show you how I hold it. So, put your both your hands together, keep your thumbs out, and just practice like this at first. So, have your whole hand inside and practice using your pointer and your thumb going back and forth. And this can give you a little visual. Um, what you're going to want to do eventually is get the hair in the middle of those while you go this way. Because that's going to pull the hair out. So you can just practice that. Um, when you're doing threading on other people, you're going to notice that this is going to be easiest with the two fingers. On yourself, it's going to be a little harder to just do those two fingers. I like to actually have my whole hand inside and do this because you have less strength, I feel like, on this side. But you, poss you probably still could. Um, so yeah, practice going back and forth and just seeing that little 
those little ties go back and forth the little wrap arounds um eventually just grab a little mirror and i will show you guys how to thread your upper lip so kind of using the method i showed you before instead you're going to use kind of just like this so i like to do this because i have more strength that way sometimes my you know my hairs could be a little tough <laughs> Um, and definitely the upper lip is going to be the most learner friendly. So if you want to start there, that's a perfect place to start. Considering that, you know, you don't have to be very precise here. Whereas here you kind of want to have a little bit of precision. So just get up close to a mirror and just see where that hair is at. I have a lot of hair on this area and practice this a little bit and then Just go back and forth. I don't like to go this way and this way, so don't do this and then this. Um, since your hair is growing downwards, you probably want to catch it at that root, and it's going to be difficult to catch it at the root if you're going downwards. Still possible, but it's much easier if you go upwards. So you're just going to keep doing that until all the hair is done. You will notice that it will sting a little bit because threading usually catches the hair at its root and pulls it out from the root instead of where shaving, it'll, you know, just slice the top of the hair or the bottom of the hair. But for that reason, threading doesn't take, you know, a short amount of time to grow back. It'll actually, you know, take a long time to grow back sometimes. I feel like me threading, it usually takes around... I do it probably around every two weeks, my upper lip. Um, I do it a lot though. So that could be a reason why it's so like reoccurring. My hairs are always growing back. Um, but just keep that in mind that it is going to sink. So just keep going there. And if you want to get these little corners, you're going to want to actually make sure the skin is stretched out. And by doing that, that method is very effective in that because it's stretching out the skin where you want to get the hairs out and it's going to make it so that your thread doesn't actually snag on your skin and you could possibly even make a cut. So keep that in mind too. Um, I wouldn't recommend starting, maybe don't start in these areas because if you are like this and if you don't have it stretched, that's very prone to getting cut. So this is how I do it, these corners. Just like that. So that's how I thread my upper lip. Um, if you want to keep learning how to thread, you can keep practicing on your lip. And if you can kind of get some precision, you can end up getting to your eyebrows. And I would say if you want to start your eyebrows, just start on the top of your eyebrows. Because that's going to be somewhere that is beginner friendly. Where you have more of a straight line as we're on the bottom. It's a little more complicated. And a lot of people actually won't do the bottoms of their eyebrows with thread because that is also prone to getting cut. If you have gotten threaded before, you might know that they ask you to stretch a lot. So they ask you to do this. And um, when you're doing your own eyebrows, you can't really do that. So keep that in mind as well. That's all that I have for you guys today. Thank you guys for watching. And I really hope that you did find something that piques your interest within threading and maybe you end up trying it someday and take on a few of the tips that i provided for you so again thank you and bye <laughs>